If you haven't guessed by the death battle video I made, I like who would win fights. So I decided to take a crack at doing verses. Here is the first in a potential series on this channel. This is Kaiser's Arena of Death. Introducing the combatants, the Ranger from Quake and Prisoner 849 from Unreal. In this fight, I will be analyzing their weapons, armors, and skills to find out who would win in a fight. <coughs> Sorry you had to hear me do that terrible villain voice. I was trying to get to the character of Baron Karza. So, now before I get to the analysis of both of these characters, I should probably explain the theme here. You see, both Quake and Unreal were highly influential FPSs from the 90s that were praised for their advanced and 3D technology. Both also had a bit of a rivalry back in the day, with advertisements on the ori original Unreal's box even saying Rip Quake 2. And when Quake Free Arena and Unreal Tournament first released, it was sort of like the 90s equivalent to the TF2 and Overwatch rivalry that was popular around 2016 and well with now now that that's out of the way time for the fighter now this is a story all about my forgetting backstory section for ranger brief because as co-creator of quake john carmack once said story in a video game is like story in a porn movie it's expected to be there but it's not that important but anyway, the story goes that the U.S. government had been experimenting with slipgate teleportation technology. However, on some other dimension, Shub Nigarov, codenamed Quake, compromised the slipgates and connected Earth's gates to the ones of its own dimension, letting her minions overrun military bases containing the slipgates. And that's where Ranger comes in. Ranger was part of Operation Counter-Strike, which was supposed to fight back against the Legions of Quake. The problem is, the entire strike team was wiped out, leaving Ranger as the sole survivor. So, with nothing but a shotgun and a fire axe, he set out on a mission to collect four ruins, which he did, and kill Quake, saving humanity which he did twice. La 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 la, weaponry, it's the way to get it done, weaponry. So, along the way, Ranger picked up various weapons. First, you got the previously mentioned axe, which is a melee weapon that absolutely no one used outside the first level, and the starting shotgun. Next up, we have the double-barreled shotgun. Pretty go good at close to mid-range combat, not so much at long range. Next is the nail gun, a rapid firing weapon that of course shoots nails. Pretty long it's a pretty long range weapon, but it becomes absolutely obsolete once Ranger picks up the super nail gun, which is the nail gun, but faster. For explosives, Ranger carries the grenade launcher, which fires a grenade that bounces across the floor floor and explodes when making contact with an enemy. And next up is the iconic rocket launcher. I don't think I need to explain much about what it does. Though, it, what makes this weapon so iconic is the fact that it allowed Ranger to rocket jump. Yeah, Ranger was rocket jumping years before Soldier from TF2. Another thing that's worth noting is that the grenade and rocket launchers use the same ammo. Finally, to round up his arsenal... We have the lightning gun, a long-range weapon that fires a stream of lightning. It's one of Ranger's stronger weapons, though wouldn't recommend using it in water. Ranger also has armor pickups that reduce damage. Besides weapons, Ranger has various power-ups, all of, all of which, with a few exceptions, last about 30 seconds. The most iconic one is the quad damage which makes the weapon do four times the, times the damage, which would be really useful if you didn't usually find it after clearing a room full of enemies. The pentagram of protection, 
makes him invin invincible, but his armor will stay still take damage when he's hit. The ring of damage will turn him invisible, but that's just the power ups from the base Quake game. Quake has had various expansion packs. Well, Frick two only give him only two give him new weapons and equipment. In Scourge of Armagon, he acquires Mjolnir, near, which is a hammer, which is better at melee than the axe, but it can also fire bolts of lightning. Next up is the laser cannon, which fires energy projectiles. Both Mjolnir and, and the laser cannon actually share ammo with the lightning gun. Don't ask me how a hammer uses ammo. No. The proximity launcher is a grenade launcher that fires proximity mines. Which, I mean, that's all there is to say. There are also a few new power-ups. The empathy shield makes Ranger invincible, but also makes the attacker take 50% of the damage they just inflicted. The Horn of Conjuring can summon one or two random monsters to help Ranger. And they will be around until they're killed. These monsters can range from the measly zombified Rottweiler. There are two more dangerous ones like the Dark Knight or the Shambler. And for a more situational power, the wetsuit can make Ranger immune to electricity-based attack. But I'm not done yet! In Disillusion of Eternity... Ranger got even more weapons. The Lava Nails, which are stronger ammo for the nail guns. The Multi Grenades is a variant of the Grenade Launcher that fires a grenade that splits into a cluster of grenades. Aids, count how many times I said grenades. The Multi Rockets, which fire four rockets. Both the Multi Grenade and the Multi Rockets use the same ammo, which is separate from the main rocket and grenade launchers. The plasma cell is sort of like the BFG. It fires a single projectile, which deals heavy damage to a target. Good. And the projectile will create bolts of lightning that will hit other enemies when it makes contact with the surface. This. It uses a different ammo from the main lightning gun. And the final weapon here, surprisingly, doesn't do any damage. The grappling hook is used to get around the area with ease sticking to a surface and sending Ranger flying towards it. And now, to the power-up section. The anti-gravity belt makes Ranger jump higher and fall down slower. The power shield reduces all damage Ranger takes from the front by 70%. The Vengeance Sphere is a little different from all the other power-ups. Unlike the others that have a time limit when Ranger takes a certain amount of damage, Mitch. Uh, the sphere, the vengeance sphere, will activate and home in on the enemy that attacked him and do heavy damage. Finally, we have the ruins, which aren't exactly power ups, but more permanent upgrades that last until Ranger dies. The earth magic halves incoming damage. Midge. The, the hell magic reduces the delay of attack by one third, basically makes him shoot faster. The Black Magic Rune doubles the damage of attack, and the Elder Magic makes him heal 5 health each second, so it basically gives him a small amount of a healing, it gives him a bit of a weak healing factor. Now, I'm finally going to just tell you what Ranger has in Quake Champions. He has the Dire Orb, which he got from Shub Nigodov. It's a projectile that explodes upon impact, or he can use it to teleport to the location that he launched the orb into. But it has a cooldown of 45 seconds. Seconds. Next, he has the passive ability, which is Son of a Gun, which reduces all self-inflicted damage. Which makes rocket jumping really easy. And that's pretty much it for about Ranger. A pretty fast guy, he's got a huge amount of weapons, and his power-ups make him a deadly opponent for anyone.
Yo, listen up, here's the story. Uh, just a heads up, uh, Vo Prisoner 849 can be either male or female. I'm going to refer to them as female, as that is the more popular depiction I see on fan, in fan art. And before I get to the analysis, let's just turn back the clock a little bit. You see, before Epic Games became synonymous with Fortnite, their first major game was a little FPS called Unreal. The game blew away audiences with its stunning 3D graphics in this world, which was just full of life, life and lifelike environments. Hell, it was also one of the first major online FPSs. But we're not really here to talk, talk about Unreal and make a retrospective. Let's talk about the Versus stuff. Prisoner 849 was an inmate of the prison spacecraft Vortex Rikers. During transport, the spacecraft was pulled in to the planet Nepali, home of the Nali, a race of primitive humanoids. Turns out Nepali contains a mineral cont called Teridium. Detecting a MacGuffin that would justify the player going on a killing spree, V. Scarge Arj, and invaded Nepali to harvest the minerals and enslave the Nali. Eventually, they came across the crashed Vortex Rikers, then boarded the ship Ip, and killed the remaining survivors, minus Prisoner 849, who picked up a weapon and escaped. I'm noticing a bit of a pattern with these FPS characters. So, with nothing but a pistol in hand and an iron will to live, she set out on a journey to free Vanali, which she did, and kill the Scar Queen, which she did, it, and escape the planet, which she did twice. I'm gonna kill you through the magic of friendship and this gun I found! Well, for weapons, let's start with the one 849 found on the Vortex Rikers. The dispersion gun is a weak pistol that can recharge ammo. It can be upgraded to do more damage, and it has a secondary firing option, which charges up the gun to fire a powerful projectile. Next up is the auto pistol. I mean auto mag. I can fire 20 consecutive rounds before needing to reload. Its old fire has it held sideways, gangsta style, somehow making it fire faster but less accurately. Next is the Stinger, a gun that fires Teridian crystals. It can fire them, can fire these shards like a machine gun, or can fire six shards at once that spread out like shotgun pellets. Let's then there is the minigun. This weapon consumes the same amount of ammunition as the auto mag. The primary fire obviously has it shoot out a stream of bullets, and the secondary fire is kind of like the auto mags. Faster but less accurate. But sadly, it does not have a prisoner 849 hold it gangster style. What a shame. The shock rifle full has a primary fire that shoots a small, lightning-fast projectile of focused energy. The secondary fire is a slower projectile of unstable energy, which can be used to rocket jump, though it's not as good as Quake's rocket jump. Another neat thing about the shock rifle is if its primary projectile hits the secondary one, It'll explode, which does a shit ton of damage. The flat cannon can fire either a fast spray of shrapnel that can ricochet off walls and ceilings, or a large shrapnel-filled shell that explodes on impact with really anything, spraying shrapnel on every direction. The razor jack fires ninja stars that ricochet off of walls and ceilings, and the alt fire has it held gangsta style to alter its trajectory. The bio rifle fires globs of teridian sludge, which explodes on contact with living tissue, 
and will stick to any surface, any non-living surface for a bit before exploding. The eight ball launcher works as a rocket launcher and grenade launcher. It can fire between one to 16, not one to 16, one to six rockets or grenades at once. The sniper rifle works exactly what, how you'd expect a sniper rifle to work. Its secondary fire shoots, shoots free consecutive shots, but they're less accurate. Finally, there's a rifle that can also fire grenades. The grenade and there's the grenade launcher and the rocket launcher. I, I honestly question why those last three weapons exist since their purposes are filled out by other weapons, but uh, whatever, I guess. Now, time for the power-ups. Much like Ranger, Prisoner 849 has armor to help reduce damage dealt to her. She also has a shield belt, that, which functions much like the armor, but instead of reducing damage, it kind of functions like an extra health bar, taking damage for her. her. She has a stronger version of that, which takes twice as much damage. Next, we have the damage amplifier, which is kind of peculiar compared to a lot of the power-ups, to a lot of the other power-ups. It has 1,000 units of charge and two drain every second it's active. This item makes the dispersion pistol and the shock rifle full do four times the damage, but it also makes it, but do, using these weapons makes the amplifier run out faster. The dispersion pistol and the shock rifle for second. Well, the dispersion pistol primary fire and the shock rifle secondary fire uh, drains 80 units per shot. The shock rifle primary very drains 100 units, and the dispersion pistol kind of varies depending on how much it charges the shot. She, Prisoner 849 also has an invisibility power-up that lasts about 50 seconds. And she also has an acoustic dampener, which makes her weapons emit less noise for 30 seconds. And the voice box. And she also has a voice box that can be dropped on the floor to make various sounds, which function as a pretty good distraction. These free items are pretty good for stealth. She, what else does she have? She has the jump boots that increase her jump height for free jumps. I, I know that's a little underwhelming, but don't worry. She also has the super jump boots, which are permanent upgrades. She has a force field, field which she kind of drops on the floor and it creates an impenetrable wall that can also be used as a platform. Uh, finally, there's the Nali fruit seed. Uh, she just leaves it on the ground and she, let it grow for a bit into a Nali fruit tree after a few seconds. The uh, fruits from the tree can can heal whoever eats them. And that's pretty much about it for Prisoner 849's power-ups. After looking at both combatants, I think it's safe to say that Ranger is be is pretty much beaten out by Prisoner A49 in raw firepower and durability, at least without power-ups. So she so she would take it, right? Not quite. You see, what makes classic FPS characters so powerful within the context of their games is their mobility. So, who is more mobile? Well, let me show you two clips from... Let me show you two clips. One from an Unreal speedrun and one from a Quake speedrun. Prisoner. Prisoner. Prisoner 
As you can see, Ranger is so much faster than Prisoner 849 that she's almost agonizingly slow in comparison. And with Ranger having stuff like the grappling hook and Dire Orb, he could easily run circles around her without having to worry about being shot. Shot and have, con and have control over the battlefield. Not to mention Ranger's power-ups uh, power can help him force Prisoner 849 to play on the defensive. He can even turn her superior firepower against her with the Empathy Shield. Plus, the Horn of Conjuring could really screw her over. Yeah, it could summon an enemy that could be pretty much useless, like a Grunt or a Knight, but it could also summon a Vor, which can fire homing projectiles, or a Dark Knight, which can fire a barrage of projectiles. But does 849 have any way to make up for her lack of mobility? Not really. She can use a force field to provide cover, but Ranger could easily get around that. And sure, her weapons may be more versatile. A multi-rocket launcher of quad damage could easily one-shot her. She could plant a nolly fruit, but that takes time, and in the time it takes for it to grow, Ranger could easily kill her. Kill her. Plus, he could just snatch the fruit away, since he is the much faster of the two. So, all in all, uh, in this battle of boomer shooters, I believe that Ranger should take it no problem.